up. Our lecture today is carcinoma of the prostate. You know that uh, from anatomical point of view that the prostate is located just to uh, distal to the bladder neck and its base is toward the bladder neck and apex rests on the external sphincter. Carcinoma of the prostate is the most common malignancy affecting male all over the world. And in post-mortem studies in Western countries, about 50% of all men over 50 years have carcinoma of the prostate. But in our country, it is not so common and is preceded by the carcinoma of the urinary bladder, it is, which is the second most common cause of malignancy after the lung and the bronchus. And the carcinoma of the prostate is probably coming on uh, uh, late in the in the list as you see in this diagram the risk factor for carcinoma of the prostate is first age it's usually a disease of elderly male and uh, it, it's more common in negro and if there is family history and dietary other risk factor is dietary fat and smoking this is a, a transitional, sorry, tra uh, transverse and longitudinal section of the prostate uh, in which there is the zones of the prostate appear. And as you know, anatomically, the prostate is contained the, uh, or formed from the peripheral zone, transitional zone, and central zone. And as we know, you know from the previous lecture that the BBH, benign prostatic hyperplasia, is occur exclusively in transitional zone. The carcinoma of the prostate, 70% in the peripheral zone and 20% uh, uh, in transitional zone and only 10% in the central zone. Uh, from pathologic point of view, uh, the carcinoma of the prostate is 70, uh, sorry, 95% is adenocarcinoma. 95% is adenocarcinoma. And uh, histopathologically, we depend on the uh, architecture. The carcinoma of the prostate differ from any other malignancy in which the other malignancy would depend on cellular changes, cellular changes in the cytoplasm and DNA. However, in carcinoma of the prostate depend on the glandular architecture. We usually use what's called glisson grade, glisson grade which are five grades according to the degree of prosthetic architectural changes from minimal, which is a grade one, to severe, which is a grade five. But uh, usually the changes are not uniform in the prostate. Usually the changes are not uniform. We find uh, more than uh, one uh, grade of the same specimen, of the same pathologic specimen. That's why they use a glisson grade. And the glisson grade is usually summation of the most, the most common or most dominant area and the second most common or most dominant area. For example, if the most dominant is the three and the second most dominant is two, so this is Gleason grade, <coughs> sorry, five. If we find only one grade, i.e. uniform pattern, the prostate is affected by, so the score is uh, two plus two. We regard this grade is the most common and it is the second most common. So the Gleason grade is from two to 10. And usually, usually below six, is regarded as mild, below six, mild, Gleason growth. But if it is seven, usually moderate. From eight to 10, Gleason score, it is severe. The staging uh, in carcinoma of the prostate, we usually use TNM stage. First, CIS or carcinoma in situ, or TIS, uh, which is usually very small. And in carcinoma of the prostate, it's called bin, bin lesion, prostatic intraepithelial neoplasia, which is a precursor for malignancy. T1 
which is discovered accidentally. T1 is discovered accidentally. Either due to uh, discovered by resected tissue, for example, patient had BBH and we resect the tissue and we find this, in this tissue is malignancy. If it is less than 5%, this T1, A. If it is more than 5%, T1, B. If discovered only by elevated BSA, patient consult the urologic and he did for him BSA and to, the BSA is elevated and we did prosthetic biopsy, we find uh, he had malignancy. This is T1C, so A, B, and C. T1A, intersected tissue less than 5%. T1B, more than 5%. T1C, only elevated BSA. T2 is within the prostate. Also, T2A, if it affects one law, and T2B, if it is more than one law. If it is extend, extracapsular, it's called T3, and usually involving the seminal vesicle. T4, tumor extend to bladder neck, tumor extend to bladder neck, adjacent tissue, either bladder neck, rectum, or pelvic sidewall. The involvement of lymph node is N1, of regional lymph node. If distant non-regional lymph node, it is M1A. If it is involving the bone, M1B. If there is distant metastasis, it is M2. And now we will come to the clinical feature. If we are waiting for the patient to present it to us with sign and symptom, it means uh, aggressive tumor. So it is usually diagnosed by surveillance usually diagnosed by surveillance. We have to invade the patient. And the tools of diagnosis is BSA and digital rectal exam, which should be done to every patient consulting urologic clinic above 50 years, 50 years or above. And if there is family history, usually even 40 years for family history or negros, we usually use even for uh, 40 year. The digital rectal exam is an examination most commonly used for detection of the prostate cancer. And we usually find a hard nodule. Every nodule should be regarded as malignancy and toll proof otherwise. But the other differential diagnosis of the prostate nodule who are chronic granulomatous prostatitis like belharziasis or TB, if patient doing previous to RB or needle biopsy, and if there is a prosthetic calculus. The investigation, we usually did a renal function test, blood urea, serum, creatinine, and complete blood picture and ESR, and we do also tumor marker. The most important tumor marker is BSA, prostate-specific antigen, which is usually not specific, not specific. If it is elevated, it means the differential diagnosis of high BSA. No, you know, normal BSA is usually below 4, below 4. But this uh, variable according to the age, size of the prostate, or any other concomitant pathology like elevated in BBH, elevated if there is urethral instrumentation, if there is infection, if there is vigorous massage you are doing for the prostate, or any previous biopsy and TURB. And uh, this elevated for a period of time and then return to normal. And in, after vigorous massage, it need one week to return to normal. While after two RB and prosthetic biopsy, it need about one month to re return to normal. So if patient doing for him prosthetic biopsy, we shouldn't send him for BSA until after one month to show the uh, result that reflecting the real result of BSA. You know that BSA is a protein secreted by prostate cell. Protein secreted by normally available in the uh, uh, in the plasma, but it is elevated if there is any process of destruction of the prostate cell. The uh, diagnosis by imaging, the first is trust transrectal ultrasound, 
which is promising from the start regarded to be promising but later on the only indication nowadays of the transrectal ultrasound is to guiding the needle in prostatic biopsy endorectal mri is also of benefit if there is suspicious but the definite diagnosis is usually by prostatic biopsy bone scan is done because the prostate has high affinity to metastasize to bone and in fact the metastasis is sclerotic type, not osteolytic, osteoblastic. The only uh, prostate probably is causing osteoblastic changes in the bone, while other malignancy is, going osteo is causing sorry, osteolytic, it means destructive. The treatment is depend on many factors because the CA prostate is dormant tumor, uh, all the tumor, all the other tumor, uh, the uh, five-year survival, measured by five-year survival. While in CA prostate, we usually use 10-year survival. It means it is slow progressive tumor. It is inert tumor. It's dormant tumor. So if there is low grade and low stage in elderly patient or patient have comorbidity like heart failure or ischemic heart disease, the only treatment is watchful waiting so the treatment is depend on grade and the stage of the tumor life expectancy of the patient and associated comorbidity uh, the ability of therapy to ensure disease free survival and it mean metastasis or not and the patient and physician preference patient and physician you have to consulting the patient and you give him the uh, line of the treatment and uh, in sharing to choose the which preferable line. Uh, definitely, you have to explain to the patient that the disease and taking his general health in consideration. But in general, if there is localized tumor, the best treatment is radical prostatectomy. The best treatment is radical prostatectomy. You have to get out and resect the tumor. But if patient have any other uh, uh, diseases or he cannot tolerate surgery, then radiotherapy and cryosurgery probably comparable to radical prostatectum. What we mean by brachytherapy is placement of radioactive source in close proximity or directly into the tumor. It's either interstitial, it means uh, directly into the tissue, or intracavitary either in cavity or lumen uh, inside or uh, in contact with tumor. This is for uh, localized, but if it is metastasized, only we use uh, uh, androgen deprivation therapy, ADT, androgen deprivation therapy, because in 70 to 80 percent of carcinoma of the prostate are tumor dependent. And complete the androgenization is the gold standard procedure and need blockage of both. You know that androgen is coming from the testis in about 95% uh, and 5% from the adrenal. If you do complete the androgenization, you have to block both sources of testosterone. In uh, testicular androgen, either surgical, bilateral or chiectomy, or medical by LH, RH analog. But in fact, the LHRH analog cause uh, in the first few weeks surge, increasing the testosterone. You have to block the peripheral block, uh, peripheral receptor of the testosterone by flutamide, and the uh, adrenal androgen is usually blocked by flutamide or bicalutamide. Thank you.